But speaking of my mom, she is one of the Pearl Girls. Is she? I was going to ask you. Yes. Is she? Yeah, I, and I want to say, you know, share the title of the book again. Is that we're talking about Pearl Girls um, encountering grit and experiencing grace. And um, this book is put together by Margaret uh, McSweeney. And um, it's just a great compilation of stories, mm -hmm. uh, women's stories of, of of, of experiencing grit in their lives, but also experiencing God's grace. Yes. And that's really what the whole Christian walk is all about. Yes. The Bible makes it very clear that we will have trials and tribulations, mm -hmm. right? And that we will struggle with different kinds of things in our lives, but that we always can rely upon the grace of God mm -hmm. to get us through. And I, so I was gonna ask you, did mom become one of your Pearl Girls? She did, and it's just such a neat story. Carolyn Ray, R-H-E-A is, okay. is her name. And in, in going through, you know, after my mom passed away, that was about seven, a little over seven years ago. And so, in her contents, I found this CD, and it was from one of her speeches she had given, because she was, you know, a writer, at a church. And I transcribed the speech oh. in here, and it's about questioning the will of God. Because when she was, goodness, probably like 20 years old, she lost her older sister, who was also named Margaret, mm -hmm. who was 22. And Margaret was in a terrible car accident, and she was a summer missionary mm. in Oklahoma, I believe it was, on a reservation, mm. and ministering to Native Americans. And a young Native American was driving the car when it flipped over. Oh. It was a convertible and killed my aunt, who I never mm. knew, Aunt Margaret, but I'm her namesake, yeah. and my mother's one and only sister. and. She questions the will of God because her parents decided to put on Margaret's tombstone, thy will be done. Mm. And that just made my mom so upset. This is your will, God, you know, to wow. take a 22 year old, you know, that became yes. her grit. Yes. Yet she shares from her heart about how she became reconciled with the will of God mm. and how there's circumstantial will, you know, the circumstance of mm -hmm. the accident. Yes. And, uh, and living in this world and yes, exactly. the corruption and, yes. you know, and yeah. Right. And then ultimately, though, God chose and through everything, um, you know, that Margaret would, would come home. But what's important to remember is God's ultimate will is always realized. So yeah. even though her life was cut sh so short, at sure. such a tender age, sure. and she wasn't able to fulfill what she felt was her calling mm -hmm. by God to become a missionary. Mm -hmm. What happened, and the, I just get goosebumps talking about this, what happened is um, God's ultimate will that Margaret's life be a blessing to others and be a witness to others became so apparent um, in so many ways. One is my mom had established a scholarship fund mm -hmm. at the school where my dad was president um, to fund college student mission trips. Okay. So my mother would get letters and then I now am the recipient of letters from these wonderful college students saying, oh, we were able to go share God's mm -hmm. word in Costa Rica and China. The, pl you know, the places yes. my aunt wanted to physically go yes. but couldn't, but because yeah. through her life. And then the most amazing postscript and, and I haven't shared this with a lot of people. When I was sitting down with my mom in one of the tender talks, uh, when I was flying back and forth, she had shared with me that she had always wanted to find the driver, to be in mm. touch with the driver. And she'd heard that he was a pastor, um, mm. but she didn't know his name, and it was in all the boxes that were stored, and she didn't know where to sure. begin. Mm -hmm. And so I just remembered her saying that and how she just wanted to let him know that she was at peace with God's ultimate will mm -hmm. and with Margaret's death and that because of the death, I mean, my mom wrote some beautiful books just about her grit mm -hmm. and, and sharing hope and, mm -hmm. you know, to touch lives. Well, I guess it was last year 
uh, some of the final boxes arrived from my brother's basement and of my mom's things. And in there was this uh, memorial of, I guess like a memorial album from Margaret's funeral. Mm. And it had a clipping with the name of the driver. Oh. And I got to the phone, I'm like, oh dear Lord, please just give me strength. I'm about to, to yeah. make this phone call. Yeah. And it's, it mentioned the church, you know, it, and so I'm like, well, you know, I now have the town and the church. I'm just going to call this church. The church secretary answered the phone, and I was saying, oh, you know, is pastor so-and-so there? And she was, oh, honey, he just passed away a few months ago. Oh. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I just shared the story with her. He had yeah. become a pastor of the church in that same area wow. where mm -hmm. Margaret had ministered. Mm -hmm. And she was, but you know what, I'm gonna give you the phone number of his widow. And why don't, you know, you reach out? And I'm like, okay, but I called my oldest brother and said, this is what's happened. And I, I, I'd rather that we perhaps call her together. Mm -hmm. And I don't know mm -hmm. if she knew Margaret or anything. Right. And I just, you know, feel better. And so we called and prayed before we called and we called her. And she was so happy to hear from us. She remembered Margaret. Margaret had been the one to get her back into church. Oh. As a, I know. And she said, I just want um, you to know, you know, he was a wonderful, wonderful pastor, changed and touched so many lives and felt so bad about what, about had, happened. what had happened. Yeah. But once again, I, I kind of, Put this as recycled grace, yeah, just yeah. showing. And then I was able to send this woman, the the wife of the young man who had accidentally, you mm -hmm. know, killed Margaret and the the driving. I was able to send her a copy of my mom's book about being a widow. Oh, wow! It never stops, does it? No, yeah. God's grace never stops, yeah. and He yeah. just provides and puts into the path mm -hmm. the people yeah and so mm -hmm. it was just so poignant we all ended the phone conversation mm -hmm. with with a prayer mm -hmm. and just thanked God for it's Margaret. so yeah. difficult for us who have these you know we we just have limited thinking yes. and we're we're so finite yes. um, it's so difficult for us to even possibly comprehend the omniscience and omnipotence and omnipresence of God. Right. Um, and I and I know that in in because God is gracious and merciful that He allows us to ask the questions and yes. and He's and he, he he hears our hearts. And and I on my way coming here, I actually was listening. To a, it was a it was a call in show, a Christian call in mm -hmm. show, and a woman had called in and said, um, you know, I'm I'm really struggling with this, but this mm -hmm. young woman just passed away, and I, I'm trying to understand, you know, God's will and all of that, and made me think about James James Dobson's book, When God Doesn't Make Sense, yes. and um, because there are things that don't make sense to no. us. I mean, no. you know, Job could certainly talk about, right. I don't understand, but then in the end. Um, uh, he got a little taste of God's omniscience and omnipotence yes. and omnipresence, yes. <laughs> right? And and um, and and maybe understood just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's difficult for us. And 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 one day we will all have the opportunity to ask him additional questions. Maybe maybe they'll all be answered once we see him, and we won't need to ask right. him. Right. And but it's, uh, yeah. And, and it's tough. And it's tough to frame this moment in life as the meantime, yes. the meanwhile, because right. eternity awaits. Yes. And it is, oh, and I don't want to minimize grit because yes. as you can see through the pages yes. of, of grit um, along the whole spectrum of grit, uh, it's difficult and yes. life, yes, life it is. is tough, but my mom would always say, there is God yeah. and God's grace yeah. and just to feel touched by God's yeah. grace and 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 I guess what I would say to a woman out there who has just been diagnosed maybe mm -hmm. with cancer or has just lost someone and nothing is beyond God's grace yeah. and he is the great redeemer yeah 
Yeah. The one that really stuck out to me was that people must always come before principles, for without love, people of principle become fanatics. And I just thought, yes. oh, what a profound <laughs> statement. Very profound. Um, and, you know, she, she talks about how even when she lost her mm. father, that she was reminded, just as you shared so many kinds of, uh, so many different um, visuals and, and and just uh, moments that you had with your dad. Um, but that ultimately, for all of us, and, and maybe that, you know, I think we're body, soul, and spirit, but for all of us, ultimately, it's, it's about that deeper relationship, yes. that our parents can fulfill mm -hmm. uh, so much, right. but then there's something that's so much deeper, yeah. and um, that, that, you know, he, he fulfills that. And I think that Jesus was teaching us mm -hmm. that, that I do nothing unless I see the Father yes. do it, and that total reliance and dependency upon the Father. Yes. Um, and I know we just showed the book up there again. We're talking about um, a book that was written by Margaret McSweeney called Pearl Girls, Encountering Grit and Experiencing Grace. Yeah. Um, I just, I want to tell you some of my favorite stories yes. in oh, here. So that was one, because yes. um, I don't want, I don't want the, I don't want us to, to uh, be done and, and me not share some of these. but. Um, Definitely Michelle Guinness because yes. it reminded me of my dad. Um, the the Lisa Jefferson story. Uh, she was the one who was on the phone with Todd, who was um, uh, on the uh, during 9/11. Yes. I don't remember which fl United flight it, it was. The United 93 yes. flight, yes. and she was the one who stayed on that phone with him and prayed the Our Father with him. Mm -hmm. And I thought what was so amazing is that at one point he called out the name Lisa which his wife's name yes. was Lisa yes. and here the woman was that he was talking to her name was also Lisa yes. but just like as I read that I just I just I, I wept mm -hmm. um, um, you know, in, in, in just how in those moments, and, and she remembered his last words, like, let's roll, because they had made a decision to try to overtake the, you know, the, 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 um, the hijackers. Yeah. So that was a that was a favorite for me. Um, another one was running to the finish line, Varel mm -hmm. Kidder, yeah. and it's because I I I'm, I was a runner, um, and I thought, oh, this this is this is kind of interesting, but talks about a daughter who had lupus. Mm -hmm and uh, who's, who's actually in remission, mm -hmm. um, and a husband who had a heart condition, mm -hmm. and here they were running in a marathon. And for her to see them, and she wanted to tell everybody, yeah. she was trying to tell the oh. news reporter, <laughs> and, and, and she just wanted everybody to know, like, you don't understand yeah. how amazing right. this is, <laughs> but that they crossed that finish line, and she had her camera ready. And just to, you know, the grit was the lupus mm -hmm. and the heart condition, and to, and, and, and to for that to be in, in two of the, the in the lives of two people who she loves so dearly, and to see them cross the finish line, yes. um, was was so um, amazing for yes. her. And a couple more, um, I just don't fit in, which was mm. Kristen Billerbeck's story. She had this unique family. Growing up, she always felt like she was outside of the circle. Um, her family kind of embarrassed her. Um, she, I, what was her brother's issue? Some challenges. He had some, some challenges, yes. and yes. just always feeling like she didn't fit in. Right. Um, right. But you know, in the end, recognizing even as she became a, a mother herself. Herself mm -hmm. and just recognizing how you know they're just they're a part of the family of God, mm -hmm. um, and then the last one and and this this was actually the first one that I looked at, um, which was the learning to dance, oh, yes. and that was Brittany Thomas's mm -hmm. story, and yes. I think we alluded to it at the beginning, and that here and, and dance for me is something so precious, oh. and I, I feel like in heaven somewhere there's got to be like a dance floor, you definitely know? <laughs> for, for those of us who just want to go in. <laughs> Praise dance, <laughs> but um, sexual abuse mm. and Crohn's disease, and then the school shooting. Right. But even in all of that, um, and these are just some, you know, exactly. some of the grit elements, right? right? There may be more, right. but in all of that, um, these were women who could still see God at the end of it. Yes. And uh, so I appreciate you, Margaret, Aww. putting this book th together and compiling these Thank stories. You.